Hello and welcome. This is the Prepper 21 channel bringing you prepping and survival plans for health and welfare. A couple of episodes ago, I prepared a presentation on prepping and survival plans for the overall change and trends that are coming our way during this decade of the 2020s. I encourage you to go back and look at that. There's a link in the description. It'll help provide context for what I'm doing today. In that initial video, I outlined a number of changes and trends that are taking place that'll bring us challenges, what those challenges are. I identified health and welfare as something to be worked at and to be maintained and to be vigilant about. One of the tenants, along with some other things dealing with inflation and food security to not only prep and survive through this coming decade, but to end up on the other side in a thriving state of being. So here we are prepping and survival plans for change and trends. I hope you enjoy this. Now, when we talk about the challenges that are out there, there's too many to really you know, go over. These are particular challenges that I have identified to me and those that I wish to try to work with and work to my benefit. So again, they deal with health and welfare, inflation, big data, and you know, really just trying to keep a great sense of the ability to thrive regardless if things go well or if they don't. So when it comes to challenges, as I mentioned, one of the most important challenges that we all face today for a number of reasons are challenges to the great state of being for our health and welfare. So before I continue, my name is Tony Teolis. This is my website. And on it, I present information for AI and maintaining a human sense of integrity and design at the heart of all autonomous and intelligent machines. I go over what's going on with trends and how I'm preparing for them and share that with you. And I share my gardening and growing skills with you and learn from you as well. Please visit. This is my YouTube channel, Tokyo73, handle Prepper21. Lots of great stuff on there to help you with your gardens, your honeybees, and more, including this video. So again, today, you are my intent. I previously explained the cause of the challenges to health and welfare. Um, and here I share what I'm going to do about them or what I am doing about them. So overall, my response and planning process is to end up on the end side of this decade in a much better position than I may be finding myself now or, or wish to end up versus having somebody else plan that for me. So my response and planning is that I have to take responsibility to make sure that I end up well, along with my family, friends, and community at the end of this decade and in a thriving mode. It deals with, again, starting with me and you, body, mind, and soul now more than ever, water, exercise, eating right, sleeping, and training, more important than ever. Um, Previous videos, I'm just going to roll through this. I've talked a little bit about preferred future planning, and my goal is to work to become the change that I want to see. I need to be more open and available to assist others, and I'm working on that to make new friends and community. Um, I talk in some other videos about what being productive means and how I plan to increase productivity over the next 10 years. Today, I'm going to just talk about what I will be doing in the health and welfare realm. So I'm just going to keep skimming through this and I'd like to see in the future a gardening community online and in my local area that's got productive community markets with all kinds of goodies, fish, fowl, fauna, flora, and food. And again, I want to make sure that I'm healthy at the end of this decade so I can continue work towards human-centered ethical design in intelligent and autonomous machines. And I'll keep saying it 
areas of great opportunity are research and development of ethical tools for machines and robot repair and drone defense. We have to take technology into our own hands before somebody else does. So with all of that said, why worry about health? How the hell do you have time to worry about health? First, you know protocol requires it. If you're listening to this now, something brought you here for some reason, something just doesn't sit right, you're not happy with the status quo, you got butterflies in your stomach and you don't know why. That's nature telling you to get ready, exercise, and those butterflies will turn into tigers that you control. So now more than ever, body, mind, and soul. You wanna be able to look back in 10 years and be in control. You do these things to prepare whether things go well or not. And trust me, I'm, I'm at the double nickel and you will have more time and energy to get the things that you wanna get done. And you know, as well as I do, the external and internal threats, they're beyond and within your control. So here we are focusing on internal threats and what we can do within our control. Also, it makes us stronger for those external threats to try to penetrate our good feelings. You have long-term goals that require vigilance to training and health, period. But we have to be strong and you cannot fake being strong. And lastly, why worry about health? Because if the world goes to hell, there won't be any time left to worry about it. So you better be healthy if it would ever happen. Hopefully this is just all preparation and good stuff. The first thing that, that has to come before any of this stuff, I'm gonna get into my basic plan for how I keep in shape and what I'm trying to do. I'm no expert. I'm only going to show what's worked for me. And my disclaimer is do not follow this instruction without seeking professional medical advice and taking on some sort of training routine. Also follow the other connections in this video to more links about how to do everything properly. I'm just going to list out what I'm doing. But first, before I can do any of that, I need my people connections. You need your people connections. It's people connections that provide our welfare. So beginning with you and then your family, your friends, your community, and even your online pals just like us. We all need each other and you need these multiple connections in order to put your plans to work and gain the support that you need. I'm here to help out as well. Through that, the power of love will help you achieve any of the goals that you wanna do, whether or not they're physical related today, or something different. So my health and welfare plan, Dreamline. Okay, Dreamline, okay, I'm not trying to be goofy here or whatever. Dreamline is a concept that's illustrated in the four hour work week by Timothy Ferris. Fantastic workbook on time management and a number of other skills. When it comes to planning long-term, how do you really achieve what you set out to do? For me, um, for decades, I've been writing things out and improving how I plan. This is my current dream line for health and welfare. So what I want to do to be healthy and stay that way. So I start out with uh, the things that I dream of and the things that I need. Just, just a kind of a simple exercise here. You know, what do I dream of having when it comes to health? What do I dream of being? What do I dream of doing? So let's take a look here. There's a lot of things written in here, but I'm only gonna concentrate on a few. So in six months, I dream of the ability to run again. And in order to do that, I am training two hours a day, five to six days a week. Now, you can look at that and say, yeah, that sounds crazy. You're not really doing that or that's too much or whatever. Fine, whatever. I'm just explaining what I do. And I don't do this all every day the same way. It's always five to six days a week. I mean, I've got a life too, and you got a 24 hours in a day. For most of those days that I'm alive, I 
choose to take two hours and put it to training. Not all in a row sometimes, I have to break it up into chunks because I wanna be able to run again. And I, in six months, I dream of being fast on my feet, hiking and camping and basically better prepared than I can be now. I plan to be certified. So working on the county emergency response team, boot camp is coming up in March and I wanna be ready for that. And um, I won't be doing Tough Mudders again going forward, but Tough Mudder like training is certainly in the future. In six months, I dream of biking everywhere. Right now, I can't bike everywhere because it's too damn cold. But um, six months, I better be on my bike just about everywhere and doing my chores like that. That'll really help for a number of different um, purposes, mostly for me because it's fun. And I hate driving around the stores and parking. I'd rather have a bag on my bike and um, be able to pull right up to the door, run in, run out, get back on my two wheels and be on my way. Biking everywhere is a lot of fun for me. So the next thing is long-term and how many years do I plan to do this? Well, I'm not gonna say a number of years right now, but in a number of years, I dream of climbing Mount Fuji and um, basically in 10 years, a dream of surviving and thriving with good health through this damn decade with you. Okay, so there's my basic plan. You can see it's not complicated. You can do an exercise like this. What are the things that you would like to see in six months? I read a long time ago, and this is my mantra. If you don't write it down, it never happened, okay? So don't rely on your memory, don't rely on your friends, don't rely on your telephone to remind you, get a piece of paper, write down what is it in your mind that you wanna have in six months, one year, two years, and 10 years, so that in 2030, you're looking back and you're saying, gosh, I'm so glad I'm here to see this, okay? So for me, the I wanna be able to run again, and that's where I'm concentrating, health and welfare, uh, energy, uh, time. So what does that mean? Well, um, I've been around for a while. And so I've done a, a number of different things, uh, you know, between high school sports, uh, US Army, and, um, you know, a number of different Tough Mudders I've done over the years. Um, I can't run right now. Maybe I can just a little bit, but we'll get into that in a second here. Um, Tough Mudders has been great. It really brought back a lot of camaraderie and neat experiences with friends and family over the years and making new friends. Um, really a team effort sport. We like to say that it's a, a challenge, not a race. Um, and you have to dig in with strangers. Um, it got to the point where it's doing so many Tough Mudders that the whole gang of family uh, paid for them to come down last year and we all participated together. Well, not all of us. Um, this was me last year, actually. And this was me. I had to sit it out last year because I've got six pins in my back now. Uh, not quite two years, about 18 months, a little bit more. That's what they look like. And I'm working my way back to being a normal functioning person. So it's a great to be able to be pain-free and move on, but it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of commitment, a lot of things I never knew that I had in me, um, but there you are. So wanna be able to run again. Now, how do I do that? Well, I try to train two hours a day. Again, I can't always do two hours in a row. I can't always do every day. I can't always do five to six days a week, but that's aside, this is the plan. And this is how I go about it. This is the plan that works for me. I don't recommend that anybody else try this. If you do try anything, make sure that you're seeking professional medical advice before you, you know, get on a treadmill and just start moving away without, uh, you know, thinking about what are your goals for this and how long would you be doing things. Don't just, don't just start exercising for the hell of it. Is what I'm saying. You got to be very careful. Got to be very careful. So, here's how I try to go about being careful early in the morning. Uh, doesn't always work out like this either, but the first 15 minutes as I awaken, you know, I try to load up on water, um, protein. Again, a tip from Timothy Ferris is 30 grams of protein within the 30, within the first 30 minutes. And that seems to be working for me. And I've been on that routine for quite a while. 
Uh, so you won't find a lot of nutrition information in here for health and welfare. It's really only about physical training because my diet is weird and um, I don't wish to impose that on anybody, let alone tell you about it. Um, reading, writing, gratefulness, all you preppers out there, you, you know what you're reading, you know what you're writing, you know what you're grateful for. Um, get it out, get that pen and paper, make your early notes and then, and then just put them away. And then I get into um, yoga sessions. I'll do yoga with yoga with Cassandra or Jen Hillman. And um, on most days I've been kind of very fortunate because you know being at home here uh, more than um, I'm used to, uh, my wife is my yoga partner. And that's always, um, it's, it's great to have a partner to train with and learn from because you really do learn from each other. You can't just keep it all in your head. Uh, next, after yoga and, and warming up a bit, I'll move on to uh, at least uh, 45 minutes of strength training. Again, not every day. Maybe some days I'll just go on a longer bike ride. But typically, I need to keep that strength up. 45 minutes strength training. Typically, um, these at marks are the YouTube channels for these places. So at Arnold Schwarzenegger, don't need to say anything else. And at Muscle and Strength. That's the um, provider of the current plan that I'm on right now. One thing I would really want to stress here is with any of this stuff, I've never paid for anything. It's all free and available. If you're willing to look, if you're willing to experiment, and if you're willing to try new things, get online, search around, check with your friends, check with your doctor, what might work for you. This is what works for me. And then I'll get into 30 minutes of cardio. And with the cardio can be a number of different things. Um, it could be a, a hit routine or it could be heavy bag and, um, you know, playing some music, working out for that. Uh, most often it's the bike, whether it's outdoor or indoor, um, it's the bike. And um, I, I like that. Uh, I always like it better outdoors. So there you are, two hours a day, 24 hours in a day. This is what I choose to do with two of them most likely about five times a week. But really being being around here a lot, you know, six hours or some six days a week workout um, is, you know, there's no strangers to that in this household. So why, okay? We, we know why we need to take care of our health. I explained that earlier, but why me? Why two hours a day? Why should you set up some sort of, you know, routine? What's the purpose? Well, I mentioned earlier, we've got goals. So I just wanna share a little bit what my short-term goals are with you. And I mentioned, I wanna be biking everywhere in six months. So as the chart goes across in time from now to 2030 and up in energy, you'll see that the activities take more of both as they are listed here. I've got certified boot camp coming up. So I wanna make sure I'm in shape for that. I plan to do a lot of hiking and camping out in the mountains, uh, not far away here, as soon as the weather will turn for me. And I wanna be able to, you know, take on new places and explore and, and jump around and be able to fall down and get lost without really putting myself in too much jeopardy. And as I mentioned again, sometime in the future, there's going to be a climb of Mount Fuji. We're talking about how would we put all the logistics together. That's a big deal. It'll take a long time. So we'll work towards that. And in the meantime, there's enough hills in the, in the area to play with. So those are the physical goals. What we have now are food growing. Okay, so food growing for me is very time intensive. It's very energy intensive. And it takes a lot of strength. So I'm staying in shape, keeping in shape, doing a lot of training in order to get through those goals I just explained to you, but also because of the food growing that's going on around here and that will be in the future. So again, as we go across time, we increase in energy. But right now, it's winter time. I'm gonna to continue to you know, be producing greens indoors with the Cracky Hydroponic System and pulling out about two salads a day uh, for as long as I can. That's gotta last at least until, oh, I suppose April, May is when I might 
be getting my first outdoor greens. Um, I don't have my exact schedule in front of me, but um, I'm in no big hurry this year because I've got a nice setup of greens already growing. Then I will be harvesting and I wanna be sharing and I need energy for both and be able to walk, uh, walk the treasures that we get out of the yard around the neighborhood and share, you know, you have to be in shape for that. Um, I want to be able to expand our operations to livestock and looking at quail and other forms of protein production and egg production. And that's going to take time and energy. And it's good to be strong as you're going to take care of other creatures and bring them into the world. I have a number of uh, herbs and um, uh, herbs that you would use for culinary purposes and medicinal herbs growing around the yard already. And then we just put in an herbal uh, garden, uh, herbal medicine garden as well. So I can rattle off that we've got comfrey and lavender, um, uh, chamomile, we have a lot of lemon balm, we have shiso mint, we have comfrey, um, golden seal, ginseng, garlic. Yes, garlic is a remedy herb. So there's a number of things, I've got a book, we're going to be expanding that. It'll be good to be strong for that. Um, and I want to get to the point where we are really surviving with and thriving with community gardens, not, not farmers markets, but neighborhood markets that everybody's taking a little bit of responsibility of something they like for the food production for the better of us all. And really, uh, warm weather's coming. I know it doesn't seem like it today, but warm weather's coming and I need to be ready to haul the cart and the shovel and the, not the pickaxe so much anymore, but um, the rake. Yeah, there's yard work to be done. And if I'm not strong for it, it ain't going to get done. And that's happening soon. So there you have it. Why me? Um, Look, I know how to grow food. I've been doing things for a number of years. I think I know how to work out. I've been through a number of tough mutters. I love being on teams. I love physical exercise. You gotta be in shape to survive this next decade. I'm one of the people that uh, is determined to do it. And I want to encourage you and share with you and learn from you of how we're gonna do it and let's do it together. So there's more information about me there. I don't need to go through it all, hopefully. You've gotten a little bit out of this about the challenges that face us. What are we going to do about them? And how do we put them into action? Now, there's a number of challenges. This is only the first of the challenges that I will address in detail. So there you have it. Health and welfare through training, through good exercise, through good eating, sleep, and family, friends, your community, and all of your buddies online. So there you have it. Take care. Thanks for watching. Share your comments and subscribe if you care to hear more. Prepper 21 out. Get prepared.